Uh, this is November 30, 2023, Refinery Media Community Co. Um, we'll go through the notes we have. Um, oh, that's not too big. Put up the recording, didn't I? Um, Okay, we'll cut that in, in post-processing. Um, cool. So we, we're doing the 2.11 release um, in the coming days. I think we've uh, we've cut the, the change log and now we're in the process of cutting a release candidate. So maybe in the next two, three weeks, um, 2.11 should be out. It includes a few a few features um, and some some experimental features promoted to to stable and enabled by default. Um, yeah, uh, Nick, do you, or uh, I think the first is, is native histograms with Cryo. Yeah, do you want to speaking of word? yeah, speaking of experimental features, native histograms is, is still an experimental feature, uh, mostly because it's experimental in Prometheus as well. So the the new stuff that we're including 2.11 is uh, some basic documentation on native histograms, like on the concept, and then how you instrument your applications for it, how you send them, ingest them, and how you query native histograms. Um, and you can probably find this information uh, not in an easy way, but you can find this information uh, around the Prometheus docs and, and code as well, but uh, this is more like in one or in, in just a couple of places uh, where it's easier to, to find and, and hopefully follow. Um, and then uh, we already had a feature for native storegrams where you could reject uh, native storegrams that had too many buckets. Because technically, a native histogram can have a million or more buckets because it's it's a it's an integer like the 64-bit, like and you can have many buckets. But that's obviously not very pra practical to store. Like if you have one bucket per uh, observation, that's not going to be very useful as a histogram. Um, so we had this feature to reject uh, native histograms that had too many buckets, but uh, in some cases that's like a bit too harsh. So we implemented the feature where if we see a histogram that has too many buckets, we try to reduce the resolution first uh, and just merge buckets and you know, like half the number of buckets until we, we fit inside the, the limit. Um, the native histograms has a minimum resolution, so we can do this for everything, but most mostly it should be possible, especially if you have like a reasonable limit, like, you know, above 50 at least. Um, you can also turn off this feature if this is causing any problem because this is very new, uh, but uh, we enabled it by default because, again, this is experimental feature, so we're not afraid to change it. Um, and then related to native histograms, um, there's a lot of boxes have bent into Prometheus and thereby, therefore into Mimir as well. Uh, also through Prometheus, bug fixes went into Grafana agent. So uh, now it's uh, possible to scrape native histograms uh, with Grafana agent, although this is available only in, in flow mode. And then um, there were a bunch of uh, fixes in, in the Grafana UI as well to make them more useful, uh, especially in the uh, histogram and the uh, heat map panel. And uh, I mentioned docs. Um, in the docs, you can find how you should for conf how you need to configure Prometheus and Grafana agent to scrape for native histograms. And uh, in the Mimir docs, I mean, so that uh, you can hook them up. And uh, there are some caveats as well there uh, that's documented. That's good to uh, know about. 
and uh, just to talk a little bit about the future the next uh, thing for for the documentation will be more around open telemetry versus native histograms or as they call them exponential histograms um, but that's it for for native histograms for today Neat. Um, do you happen to have a link to the to the docs for, for native? Oh yeah, you can link the docs. Sorry, yeah, I'll do that while you. Somebody else speaks. Yeah, um, and then some some less big features um, that we've gotten into this release. First one is the retry after header, which Ian worked on. Yeah, uh, we introduced the retry after header um, in the response for all the recoverable recoverable errors like 500 or 429 uh, because uh, during the operation we have uh, realized that some of the um, during uh, some incidents that uh, agent upper models will try way too fast and it will cause some side effects like sundering hurt uh, so from uh, the release 2.11 you could set up that uh, header to protect the mimia right pass a little bit better so how that is calculated, it is composed with a base and the retry attempts. Uh, let's say you have a base of a three, a retry attempts is equals to one. That means uh, the retry afters will be set at three multiplied by two power retry attempts minus one. Uh, that means three and then uh, random from three to six. And the second retry will be from 6 to 12. Uh, it's a still an experimental feature that we have test ourselves internally. So please try it out and uh, provide some feedback uh, if you, you do have any. So this is disabled by default now? Yeah, it's, it's still disabled by it. default, yes. Ideally, sometime in the future, it will be enabled by default. Uh -huh. um, not not all versions of the agent support this, and like Prometheus. Do you remember what version of Grafana uh, agent? Prometheus I know to? Grafana agent is uh, zero point thirty seven point three, uh, but or two. Yeah, I can double check that. Okay, and then Prometheus. Prometheus used to support this from a long time ago. Maybe I'm wrong. I want to say it supported it for 429s, but the support for 500s was new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Thank you, Nick. Okay, I'll maybe we'll find this later. Um, the next thing I want to mention was the store gateways parse headers. So now they're enabled by default. This was an experimental feature that got into 5.10, I think. Um, into uh, 2.10. Um, now it's enabled by default. It should help by should help in loading blocks in the store gateway, like by up to 90%. So it's it's really helpful when you have lazy loading enabled, which is which is the default. So if you haven't touched lazy loading, then this should help you. So around scaling store gateways um, and restarting them. Um, yeah, and also querying long into the past should, should now have much lower latency. Um, another thing which was enabled by default was the ingester to query chunk streaming. So this is a new way of the ingesters sending back the responses to queries to, to queries. Um, previously, they would, they would bunch up everything into one response and then send it over. Now they, they send um, chunk by chunk, or, or I mean, bit by bit, and then the query evaluates from KO in the, in the background. Um, so they should speed up, in theory, queries, but um, also reduce the memory of, of queries. Um, if I recall correctly. I, th I think that's it, yeah. Um, and then last one is, last one we have on the agenda is query blocking. Uh, Nick, do you want to say a word? Yeah, 
this was a, a community contribution from uh, from Wilfred. Um, it is the ability to specify regular expressions for a particular tenant and block queries that match those. <clears throat> uh, if you have a user who's sending uh, maliciously bad or just carelessly bad queries, you can uh, you can block them and they'll get a they'll get a message and then you know contact you say what's going on. But you know just another thing to uh, to protect your Amir cluster. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, thanks thanks Wilfred for for this. We 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 had a use case for this internally um, since it was added. Um, yeah, I think we're done with the agenda. Unless someone has joined. In the meantime, we can adjourn this. Cool. Thanks all for for attending. Um, if there's anything, find us in Slack. Um, or drop us an email. Nobody drops emails. Yeah, find us in Slack. The Grafana community Slack. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah.